Well, the case against Jennifer Crumley will head to the jury this morning. They'll have to weigh hundreds of pieces of evidence and about a week of testimony. And it's certainly a difficult case, one that could set the precedent for parents in future tragedies, as she is the first mother of a school shooter to be tried here in our country. And she's facing four counts of involuntary manslaughter and the deaths of Hannah St. Juliana, Tate Meir, Madison Baldwin, and Justin Schilling. Now, Crumbly faces up to 15 years in prison if convicted. Prosecutors argue she missed multiple opportunities to stop the shooting, ignored her son's deteriorating mental health, and planned to flee. The defense says no one could have foreseen the tragedy, and they put most of the blame on school leaders. And 7 Action News reporter Peter Maxwell has been following this case. He's live in Pontiac for us this morning. And Peter, there's a lot for the jury to consider this morning. Well, starting at 9 a.m., the jury will be back in that courtroom. That's where the judge then will start to give the jury instructions. They'll then be sent back into a room where they will be given a packet filled with instructions, and they have a mountain of evidence to go through over 500 exhibits and 20 plus witnesses. Now these deliberations can be a few days or possibly even a few hours. And you must remember that the prosecution has the burden to prove this case uh, beyond a reasonable doubt. And I think the jurors are going to take it very seriously. The case against Jennifer Crumbly, lasting just over a week and soon, the fate of Jennifer Crumbly will rest in the hands of jurors in the case as they go into deliberations. Attorney Todd Flood, a managing partner at Flood Law, says after they've been given instructions, the jurors will then begin to comb through mountains of exhibits that were presented during the trial by both the prosecution and the defense. They've listened to all of it, and I'm sure over the weekend they... Uh, Definitely soaked a lot of it in. At the end of deliberations, the jury then must come to a unanimous decision. They're the Supreme Court. I consider them the Supreme Court of the facts. They're the judges of the facts. This is a landmark case, one that could have everlasting impact nationally. It's the first time the parents of a mass shooter are being charged with involuntary manslaughter. Flood says emotions and sympathies must be put aside when coming to a decision. It's hard. It's hard. But, um, you know, that's the job. That's the duty of a juror. And they take it very seriously. Now, both the prosecution and the defense, they're going to be on a standby until a verdict is reached. They'll then go back into the courtroom. That's where a foreman who was uh, voted by the jury members will then deliver that verdict. Now, the best thing that can happen for the defense in this case, if the jury comes out as a hung jury, then the process then has to once again start all over. Again, the jury reports back in the courtroom at 9 a.m. Reporting in Pontiac and Peter Maxwell 7 Action News. Yeah, this is a case that of course our community is closely watching but the entire country is as well. Peter, thank you for their live reporting today. Stay with 7 Action News for continuing coverage of this historic trial. Our crews will be at the courthouse ready to bring you live update the moment the verdict is reached both on air and online at WXYZ.com.